What's going on guys? Today's video will be another tutorial on how to create an endless moving background in SpriteKit. So yeah, I already created a blank Xcode project with a game template, so you can do that right now, just pause the video. Um, the first thing I'm going to do is, is to create a, whoa, what's that? Is to create a sprite node called ground. Alright, and then I'm going to set the anchor point for this scene to be 0.5 because that's what I like working with for the games. And then underneath the update function, I'm going to create a function called gray grounds. And then in here, this is where we're going to set up the grounds that we're going to have moving. Now, the ground that we're going to be using is is the ground that you can see, that you see in the Flappy Bird game, the original Flappy Bird game. So we're going to find the ground right now and grab it off Google. So we're going to open up a new window and of course it opened up in my other monitor so I'm just dragging this over now I'm going to search for flappy bird ground.png okay go to the images and I'm going to grab the first image that popped up I'm going to save this to my desktop um, I already saved it already so I don't need to do that but you have to save it to your desktop or whatever you want to save it to grab that image that you just saved right Bring it over to the assets folder and drag it and drop it in there. All right, now let's create the grounds. So let's create a loop for i in zero and three. Let's say let ground equal to sk sprite node image named ground. And say ground dot name equals to ground. I'll ground here. Ground dot size equals to a cg size and the width is going to be the self dot scene dot size dot width so the ground is going to the ground's width is going to match the scenes width and the height will be 250 now it's complaining because we had to write it a certain way but xcode will fit that fix that for us and ground dot anchor point equals to cg point 0 0.5 0 0.5 now let's set the position for the ground to be, uh, well the x is going to be different and what that means is, I'll show you, I'll explain in a minute. So I'll say cg float, we're going to pass an i here, and you don't know where i is referring to, i is referring to right here in the loop, okay, and then we're going to say times ground dot size dot width, alright, and the y is going to be negative self dot frame dot size dot height divided by two all right now what this means is uh, the first loop or the first iteration in the loop is going to be zero right so we're going to multiply the grounds width by zero now that's going to put this ground this first iteration right in the middle right in the middle of the screen and then the second iteration will be one and it's take the ground width multiplied by one which is going to move the second ground to the right of it and we keep going and going and going until it's out of the loop all right now let's add this ground to the scene okay now we'll create one more function to get this working we we'll say move ground or move ground yeah and here we we'll say self dot enumerate child nodes with names name will be the ground which we called right here all right and then here we're going to open two parentheses and here two curly braces uh have some room now open um parentheses and say node error say in all right that gets rid of the error now what we're going to do in here is now say node dot position dot x minus equals two now you can put any number here but i'll show you what each number does and then now we say no, if node of position dot x is less than the negative of self dot scene dot size dot width. Okay. And here we say node dot position dot x plus equals self dot scene dot size dot width times it by three, which is the number of times this loops right here. Now it's complaining like before because we have to write it a certain way, so X is going to fix that for us. Alright. Now what this is doing is, right, 
we're going to call the move ground function in the update, right? So this gets called every time, called before each frame is rendered. So it's going to be called a lot of times, right? So every time this function is called, it's going to grab the node with this name. We're going to subtract the x position of this node by 2. And then we're going to check if the position of this node or the x position of this node is way off to the left of the screen. Then we're going to move that position of the node by how many times we create the grounds, if you can understand that. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to call the create grounds function in here so we can create the grounds. And then I'm going to run it, and everything should work out as it should. All right, it's loading up now. And you should see the ground on the bottom, which you can see right here, and it's moving. Now, it's going to move endlessly because every time one one of those grounds goes off screen, it moves all the way to the right and puts it in front, and it keeps going and going in a loop over and over again, endlessly. And it will never run out because it keeps going in an endless loop. So, yeah, as you can imagine, you can use this logic in one of your games if you want to create a 2D platform endless runner type game. So, yeah, this pretty much wraps up for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed the quick tutorial. Like and subscribe, and yeah, I'll see you in the next video.